Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And uh, salam sejahtera So in this video we going to continue um, For the preparation of insoluble salt So in previous lesson uh, We already cover on the preparation of soluble salt By using for reaction of acid And for this video I will teach you on how to prepare insoluble salt. But before you, you, you want to know the preparation of insoluble salt, first, you have to make sure you can recognize which one is uh, soluble salt. Okay, what are the soluble salt? So, if you already uh, recognize the insoluble salt, so let's start. Insoluble salt can be prepared through double decomposition reaction. Um, or precipitation reaction in this uh, double decomposition what we need is we need two soluble salt combined together and we supposed to produce only one insoluble and another one soluble salt okay so let's start okay let's say the first example uh, my insoluble salt is silver chloride so as soon as I know that the silver chloride is insoluble salt, so I'm going to suggest the preparation for the insoluble salt by using the double decomposition or precipitation reaction. So I have silver and chloride. So the first soluble salt supposed to contain for sure silver. And the second soluble salt supposed to contain chloride. So, baru kita dapat silver chloride. Okay. So, what I need to do is, I need to suggest any soluble salt that contain silver ion. So, this one you have to uh, memorize uh, the table of soluble and insoluble salt. So, what is the example of soluble salt that contain silver? At the same time, the adalah soluble. Silver yang soluble. Okay. So, the answer is silver nitrate. Yes, silver nitrate. And we need to find out what is the example, the most suitable soluble salt from the chloride salt. And it is soluble. So, chloride, cek pah. Yang insolubelnya adalah P, P, B, A, G, H, G. The rest you can use. Okay, let's say I suggest zinc. So, I will have zinc chloride. So, so, let's check. Silver nitrate is soluble. Zinc chloride is also soluble salt. So, what is mean by double decomposition? Um, dia akan kahwin silang. Dia decompose. Silver nitrate decompose. Zinc chloride decompose. When they decompose, so dia akan terpisah. So, dia akan uh, combine secara silang. Silver combined with chloride. And then, another one. We have zinc and nitrate that will be our snack salt okay so what we need to check is is it correct soluble soluble insoluble and soluble so silver nitrate is soluble salt zinc chloride is also soluble salt silver chloride is insoluble salt and the last one zinc nitrate is soluble salt what happened if we don't recognize them so for sure you cannot have the correct answer okay so moving on to the second example i have barium sulfate as my insoluble salt so to prepare in barium sulfate i can add the barium ion and also sulfate ion so you need to suggest barium apa yang soluble okay so kalau you nak senang Soluble salt ni uh, Yang semua soluble adalah Nitrate salt So kalau you pilih Barium nitrate Confirm It going to be correct Sebab all nitrate salt are soluble salt Okay um, So cerita dia adalah All nitrate Salt Are soluble salt Number one Number two All Anak Ammonium Sodium and potassium salt are soluble salt. Okay, ini paling ringkas supaya 
I tak payah fikir lama lah So kalau I pakai barium nitrate The next soluble salt I can choose like sodium sulfate But make sure the formula is correct So my insoluble salt is barium sulfate And another soluble salt is sodium nitrate Make it balance Put two here Okay it's balanced Okay And the third insoluble salt is magnesium carbonate So we write down the magnesium and the carbonate So magnesium and carbonate Find the soluble salt that contain uh, magnesium So paling senang ambil magnesium nitrate Kalau tak nak ambil magnesium nitrate You can have magnesium chloride, magnesium sulfate It doesn't matter, tak kisah For the carbonate, you can choose either sodium, ammonium or potassium. Let's say I choose potassium. So, the formula is K2CO3. So, my insoluble salt adalah magnesium carbonate. And then, the soluble salt is potassium nitrate. So, untuk mendapatkan jawapan bagi double decomposition. So, uh, we might have a different answer. So, Tak semestinya you pakai magnesium nitrate and potassium carbonate. Maybe you want to use magnesium sulfate and um, sodium carbonate. Or maybe magnesium chloride and ammonium carbonate. So, each of us maybe we're going to propose different answer. It's okay as long as dia memenuhi syarat soluble salt and soluble salt. Produce one insoluble salt and another one is soluble salt. Okay, so the rest you can try by your own. So, how to prepare uh, barium sulfate? So, barium sulfate. Okay. So, barium sulfate, for sure we have the barium and also the sulfate. So, in this situation, um, they suggest dekat kita dia pakai barium chloride and sodium sulfate. Okay. So, our product will be barium sulfate and um, sodium chloride. Okay, sorry. To here. Okay. So, um, because barium chloride and sodium sulfate is a soluble salt, dudu larut. So, it's very easy to handle this experiment. You just measure. Kita hanya perlu um, measure uh, the the salt, the soluble salt and mix them, campurkan dia dalam in the same beaker and then you stir directly you akan dapat the, the insoluble salt as the precipitate in the precipitate form mix dengan uh, the soluble salt dalam bentuk solution so when we mix barium chloride and sodium sulfate, apa yang kita akan dapat dalam beaker, kita akan dapat precipitate and solution what we want is the precipitate sebab dia adalah insoluble salt dalam bentuk precipitate so how can we get the precipitate so we just filter okay so when we filter apa yang kita nak adalah the residue yang tinggal dekat filter funnel tu the residue is what we want so the residue is our insoluble salt so what you have to do you can rinse with this the water and then to make it dry you just press between two filter papers you can refer um, to the textbook for a complete procedure I just give you a little bit idea about how to prepare the insoluble salt okay and preparation of uh, under preparation of salt so we can construct the ionic equation through the continuous variation method what is continuous variation method continuous variation method is used to construct the ionic equation for the formation of insoluble salt. So, ini adalah kaedah untuk kita menentukan ataupun membuat uh, ionic equation. Based on the data of the experiment, kita buat ionic equation guna continuous variation method. Apa yang kita buat? Uh, kita fixkan satu volume and then uh, second volume kita tambah-tambah-tambah sehingga kita boleh menjumpai uh, volume yang mana yang ngam-ngam untuk uh, react sepenuhnya di antara dua produk reactant tu lah, sorry ok, so let's say this is to make you more easy to understand ok, we have um, 8 test tube test tube 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 
So in all these eight test tube, we put the same volume of lead to nitrate. 5, 5, 5, 5, 5 all 5 cm cube. And then for the uh, second um, uh, substance, which is the potassium iodide, so we in the first test tube we just put one cm cube, masukkan satu second test tube letak dua tiga and so on until eight. Maknanya makin lama the amount or the volume of potassium iodide increase. Okay, makin lama makin banyak. So what is the effect? What is your observation in the first test tube? Kalau kita tengok the high of precipitate tu dia rendah sikit Okay. In the second test tube, tinggi lebih sikit. Third test tube lagi tinggi. Fourth test tube lagi tinggi. Fifth test tube, bila kita masukkan um, uh, 5 cm cube of lead to nitrate and 5 cm cube of potassium iodide. So, kita dapat ketinggian ni. Kita kena ukur lah eh, ketinggian ni. And then, the next test tube, test tube number 6, kita still lagi fixkan uh, volume lead to nitrate tapi kita dah upkan potassium iodide. Even though kita naikkan potassium iodide tapi dia punya precipitate still berada pada paras yang sama. Maksudnya apa? Kita ada lebihan daripada salah satu uh, reactant. Mana yang lebih? So kita dah tambah dah potassium iodide. Okay tapi lead to nitrate tu fix. So, yang lebih adalah yang bertambah tu lah. So, apa yang lebih? Yang lebih adalah potassium iodide. So, macam mana kita nak tahu uh, ionic equation? Ionic equation kita kena tengok uh, the first test tube. Test tube mula-mula sebelum dia mula jadi constant. Dia punya ketinggian. So, which test tube? Test tube yang ni lah kan. The first test tube that achieve the maximum height of precipitate indicates that apa maksud dia all the reactants has completely reacted with one another meaning that kita ada lead to nitrate secukupnya untuk react secukupnya dengan potassium iodide berapa secukupnya in test tube 5 so ini adalah uh, secukupnya lah 5 cm cube of lead to nitrate and 5 cm cube of potassium iodide so this is Meaning, uh, mean by continuous variation method Kita nak tahu berapa the exact volume Bagi setiap uh, satu reactant Yang perlu diguna pakai untuk bertindak balas dengan reactant yang satu lagi Okay So uh, that is from the experiment Now we, uh, I will teach you on how to write the ionic equation How to write It's not from the data It's from the, the equation Macam mana kita nak menulis um, the ionic equation Okay Why ionic equation is important Ionic equation When we say ionic Kita akan nampak ions When we say chemical equation There will be no ions We only have atom, molecule or compound In ionic equation You can see ions Why? Because in ionic equation uh, Dia memberi pengiktirafan Acknowledgement Because dia nak menunjukkan Which ions really take part in a reaction Mana yang betul-betul bekerja untuk menghasilkan produk So, how to write the ionic equation So, we have a few steps here The first one, you need to uh, write down the chemical equation first Tulis chemical equation, let's say uh, Sulfuric acid react with sodium hydroxide You got sodium sulfate and water Make sure it balance Okay, kena pastikan dia balance and then you can separate you can pecahkan dia kepada ions so this one you can ada kebolehan untuk mengenal pasti siapa yang tak boleh pecah pada ion siapa boleh so i list down here yang tak boleh ha, yang tak boleh adalah insoluble salt water gas or molecule atom or metal so kita kena check lah macam nak check ok let's check um, sulfuric acid is not in the list acid tak ada maka dia boleh pecah uh, sodium hydroxide is an alkali not listed so dia boleh pecah sodium sulfate is a soluble salt not listed here so kita boleh pecahkan dia H2O is there so cannot so yang boleh tu maknanya you, you pecah dia kepada ion apa maksud pecah kepada ion sulfuric acid contain hydrogen ion and sulfate ion so you have to split them Sodium hydroxide because we have uh, two in front. 
So meaning that kita akan ada 2 sodium ion and 2 hydroxide ion. Yang ni yang boleh pecah. And then for the sodium sulfate, okay, sodium ion is Na+. You kena ingat charge dia. And we have 2 here, maknanya kita ada 2 biji sodium ion. And then 1 sulfate ion. Okay. And then yang tak boleh pecah tu, you just copy. You just copy H2O. Okay, after that, we need to cancel uh, the same ions on both sides. So, dia ada ion yang sama tu, kita kena cancelkan dia. So, apa ion yang sama, kita ada uh, sulfate ions and also sodium ion. So, what is left? Apa yang tinggal? Yang tinggal adalah 2 hydrogen ion and 2 hydroxide ion produce 2 H2O. So, disebabkan dia 2, 2 and 2, kita simplify. Dia jadi 1 hydrogen ion, 1 hydroxide ion produce H2O. So, this is our ionic equation. Okay, we can see the ions here. So, which ion really take part in the reaction? Siapa yang betul-betul bekerja sebenarnya? The answer is hydrogen ion and Hydroxide ions only to produce water molecule. Okay, let's try. Okay, write ionic equation for the reaction below. The reaction between acid and metal. Okay, first write chemical equation. So, magnesium is Mg, hydrochloric acid is HCl, produce our salt, magnesium chloride. MgCl2 and hydrogen gas. So, your skill in writing chemical equation is really important. Writing chemical formula, chemical equation sangat penting. If not, you cannot have correct ionic equation. So, kalau tak ingat charge, tak ingat formula, tak tahu nak balance, tak tahu... Um, the product memang tak boleh jawab So you kena tengok dulu The previous notes The previous video And then baru you boleh continue with uh, Writing the ionic equation Okay And make sure it's balanced Okay put here So daripada sini We need to identify um, Siapa yang boleh pecah Siapa yang tak boleh dipecahkan Okay Okay, so magnesium, look at here, dia ada dalam list ke tak? Kalau dia ada dalam list, memang kita tidak dibenarkan untuk uh, split dia kepada ions. So magnesium is a metal. So dia ada dalam list. So dia tak boleh nak pecah-pecah lah. Memang kena salin macam tu lah. Hydrochloric acid is not listed here. So can. Magnesium chloride is a type of soluble salt, so can. Hydrogen is a gas, is a molecule, cannot. So, we copy yang cannot ni dulu, kalau tak nak pening. Okay. Now, baru kita pecahkan kepada yang kita boleh pecah. HCl, kita pecahkan kepada hydrogen ion and chloride ion. Magnesium chloride, we split into magnesium ion and chloride ion. And we have two chloride ions. Okay. So the last step, we need to cancel the same. Tengok kiri dan kanan. Dia kena exactly the same. Bilangan dia ke, ada charge, tak ada charge. Semua kena sama. So Mg on your left is Mg. On your right is Mg2+. Plus. Is it same? The answer is no. Okay. And then we have two H+. Plus. Belah kiri, belah kanan H2 juga tak sama. So apa yang sama ni? Yang sama adalah chloride ion. So what is our ionic equation? The ionic equation is Mg plus 2H plus the product is Mg2 plus plus H2. Okay. So I'll show you another reaction which is precipitation reaction. So we, the first step to write the ionic equation, we must write the chemical equation first. Chemical equation is potassium iodide react with lead to nitrate. The product is lead to iodide and potassium nitrate. Check. 
and balance it so to here to okay next kita kena tengok siapa yang kita boleh split siapa tak boleh potassium iodide is a soluble salt dia follow chloride eh follow chloride chloride yang insoluble adalah pah pah so iodide so also pah so potassium iodide is soluble salt boleh Lead to nitrate, soluble salt. Lead to iodide, insoluble salt. is listed there. So, tak boleh pecah. Uh, potassium nitrate, soluble salt. Boleh pecah. Salin yang tak boleh pecah dulu, senang. Yang tak boleh split, you just copy. PBI2. Okay. So, yang boleh dipecahkan, kita akan mula pecahkan dia. Potassium iodide is contain potassium ion and iodide ion. Ada berapa? 2 potassium, 2 iodide. Okay, lead to nitrate contain Pb2 plus and also nitrate ion. You kena ingat charge sangat-sangat eh untuk uh, writing ionic equation ni. How many nitrate? We have 2 nitrate. And potassium nitrate contain potassium ion and nitrate ion. How many potassium ion? Two. How many nitrate ion? Also two. The last step, kita cancel the same. Okay. So, apa yang sama? Potassium, potassium. Nitrate, nitrate. So, what is our ionic equation? We have iodide ion plus Pb2 plus the product is PBI2. This is our ionic equation. Okay, so what is the most important thing is you know how to write chemical equation very well and uh, you know the list of the substance yang tak boleh pecah kepada ions. And then, uh, that's going to be easy for you. Okay. So, you can try this question from your NILAM uh, module and also you can discuss with your teacher. That's all from me. Thank you for listening and Assalamualaikum and Salam.